Sometimes the question that scientists ask is not why is something happening, but rather why isn't something happening. That was a question embryologist Thomas Hunt Morgan encountered when he was working with his model organisms fruit flies, their Latin name being Drosophila melanogaster. In one of his experiments, Morgan was testing female flies that had a white body with long wings and male flies that had a black body with small wings. And by this time, Mendel's laws of dominance were well established. So from his previous experiments, Morgan knew that the white body trait was dominant over the black body trait and long wings were dominant over small wings. He also knew from his previous experiments that the genotype of the females was heterozygous for these traits with capital W being the allele for white body, small w being the allele for black body, capital L being the allele for long wings and small l being the allele for small wings. And the genotype of the male flies was homozygous recessive. So in one of his experiments, he crossed these two types of flies and recorded his observation. He expected to observe these types of genotypes and phenotypes in the offspring in the ratio 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. That is, he expected 25% of the offspring to have white body with long wings, 25% to have a black body with small wings, 25% to have white body with small wings and 25% to have black body with long wings. In other words, he expected 50% of the population to have the parental phenotypes and genotypes, 25% here and 25% here, and 50% to have the recombinant genotype and phenotype. This was in accordance with Mendel's law of independent assortment and this is what Morgan expected to observe in his experiment. But the results that he obtained shocked him. Because instead of observing 50% of parental and 50% of recombinants, Morgan observed that 83% of the population had the parental genotype and phenotype, which is these two. And only 17% of the population had the recombinant phenotype, which is these two. He was quite shocked that these traits were not following Mendel's law of independent assortment and instead of getting 50% parental and 50% recombinants, he was getting 83% parental and 17% recombinants. He began to wonder why weren't these traits following Mendel's law of independent assortment and how come he was getting these results. Morgan knew that the answer to his question lied within the chromosomes specifically within the pair of homologous chromosomes. If you recall from previous classes, a pair of homologous chromosomes consists of one chromosome that you inherit from your father and one chromosome that you inherit from your mother. And in these pairs of homologous chromosomes, the genes are located or the variants of the genes or alleles are located on the same location on both chromosomes. If you also recall from earlier classes, the two chromatids that make up one chromosome are known as sister chromatids. So these two are sister chromatids while these two are non-sister chromatids. And if you recall from earlier classes, it is between these two non-sister chromatids that chromosomal crossing over or recombination takes place. So these facts were well established and Morgan knew that the answer to his problem lied within the location of the two genes, the genes for the body color and the wing length on the homologous pair of chromosomes. He had two scenarios. In one scenario, the genes for body color and wing length were located quite far away from each other on the chromosome and in another scenario, the genes were located quite close to each other on the chromosome. First, let's start with the first scenario. What would happen if the two genes were located quite far away from each other on the chromosome? So here we have the female chromosomes on which the genes for body color and wing length are located quite far away from each other on the chromosome. Now, if chromosomal recombination were to take place somewhere over here in between these two genes, then this is what it would look like. So the two non-sister chromatids would attach to each other at sites of recombination and the two alleles for the body color gene would swap over. This would come from here and this would go here. And 
this would mean that the recombination would result in these types of chromatids after the chromatids separate. In this case, you can observe that these two chromatids resemble the parental chromatids while these two are the recombinants. If these types of chromatids would have formed, then Morgan would have observed his expected results, which is 50% of parental and 50% of recombinants. But since this was not what he observed, he deduced that the two genes were not located far away on the chromosome, but they were located quite close to each other on the chromosome. So let's take a look at that scenario where the two genes are located quite close to each other on the chromosome. So here we have the scenario in which the two genes are located close to each other on the chromosome. And now if you imagine a crossing over event taking place somewhere over here, then it would look something like this. So here, because the two genes are located very close to each other, unless the crossing over is happening exactly in the middle of these two genes, the two genes are going to cross over together when crossing over is taking place that would result in these types of chromatids being formed after the chromatids separate. Because the two genes have crossed over together, all are parental chromatids with no recombinants formed. So let's take a closer look at how the chromatids would look like after they separate. Since these are all parental and no recombinants, it means that these two chromatids would be the same as the chromatids found in the female flies or the mother flies, whereas these two chromatids would be the same as the chromatids found in the male flies or the father flies. So with this, Morgan deduced that if genes are located quite close to each other on the chromosome, they are oftentimes swapped over together, crossed over together as a unit linked to each other. But does it still explain how he got 17% of recombinants? Because Morgan did observe that, right? 83% were parental, but 17% were recombinants. If this is happening, if in all cases the two genes are swapping over together and if no recombinants are formed, then how did he get 17% of recombinants with 83% of parental genotypes and phenotypes? To answer that question, let's take a look at another example. Consider these three genes, A, B and C. They are located at the same location on the pair of homologous chromosomes and there are two alleles, capital A, small a, capital B, small b, capital C, small c. A and B are located very close to each other on the chromosome, whereas B and C and A and C for that matter are located very far away from each other on the chromosome. Now to get the recombinant phenotype, say between A and B, it means that the recombination event has to take place exactly over here in between A and B. If you see, there's just not enough space for recombination to take place between A and B, right? They're located quite close to each other on the chromosome. This doesn't mean that recombination will never take place between these two closely located genes. It just means that the chances of recombination occurring are very minimal between these two genes because they are located very close to each other on the chromosome. That's why genes that are located very close to each other on the chromosome with very minimal chance of recombination are known as linked genes. So in our scenario, the genes for body color and wing length were located close to each other on the chromosome and they are known as linked genes. This doesn't mean that recombination cannot occur in between these two genes because in some events it has occurred which is why we got 17% of recombinants, right? So this just means that the chances of recombination occurring are minimal but it doesn't mean that recombination will never occur in between these two genes. So the right way to term it is that linked genes are almost always inherited together. Almost always because there is still some chance that recombination will take place exactly over here in between these two genes which will result in the recombinant phenotype. When comparing that with say genes B and C, there is just more space. 
there is a higher chance of recombination between B and C or A and C for that matter because there is a lot of location where recombination can take place between these two genes. You have to remember that recombination is a totally random event and it can take place anywhere on the chromosome. It's just there is a higher frequency or a higher chance of recombination happening anywhere here in between these two genes compared to these two genes which is why linked genes are almost always inherited together doesn't mean that they are not inherited together but there is just a very minimal chance of recombination between those two genes and in our scenario the genes for the body color and wing length are linked genes which is why morgan obtained 83 percentage of parental phenotypes and only 17 percentage of recombinant phenotypes now using this one of morgan's students was able to map the location of several genes on human chromosomes which led to the innovative human genome project about which we'll learn in another video.